Namaste. Welcome, welcome. Um, happy last night of Navaratri. So tonight is the last night, formal night of Navaratri. And then um, tomorrow is what's considered the 10th sort of bonus day, the extra day, right? So Navaratri is nine nights celebrating the goddess and how she sweeps through the world and returns it back to um, the state that it is meant to be, right? She removes whatever has become out of place or stagnant or um, out of balance, and then the world is renewed, right? So we begin again. But that 10th day is considered the day of victory, right? So it's the day that you celebrate that all of the demons have been slayed. It's the day that you celebrate the ability to come home, right? That's the metaphors. It's actually a reference to Ram, the name for the day, is a reference to Ram coming home at the end of the Ramayana, right? And he's been exiled for almost two decades, right? <laughs> he's been exiled from his home. And so we're finally able to come back, right? And what are we coming back to? What are we celebrating? We're celebrating this return to the knowledge that we are more than just this physical embodiment, right? So the process of moving through the different um, versions of the goddess, different versions of Durga, different versions of whatever name you give her. Saraswati is the one who traditionally is said to be the last three days, the energy of Saraswati. And she brings us back to what she represents for us. She brings us back to this knowledge of ourselves as that eternal energy, the energy of the soul right? Higher consciousness. And what's suggested is that as you're working with this energy of the goddess is that you have to take that awareness of yourself as the highest consciousness that you are, and then you have to weave it back into this world that you're living in, right? So you can't leave it as this separate reality that says, oh, I know one day, one in one circumstance, I will be that soul energy. You are that soul energy. So to weave it back into the world and know that when you go grocery shopping, you're a soul, that when you answer the phone, you're a soul, that when you are in an argument, you're a soul, that when you are doing anything that you're doing, you're a soul, right? And to not get caught in that place where the mind says, but I'm just this limited kind of version. I have no choice but to give in to these limitations. I have no choice but to be ruled by my uh, emotions. I have no choice but to give in to that craving. I have no choice but to react the way that I always do, right? So Saraswati is this energy that allows us to cut ourselves free of that belief that our mind gets to dictate who and what we are, right? So that becomes our practice. And we, you know, I know that all of you have heard this a million times before. We say we are not this body, we are not this mind. But to actually live that where you know that your mind is a receptacle for your soul. Can you make it that? And can you really look for that connection instead of assuming that whatever is going on in your mind is just the best you can do, right? And you hope that one day it'll get better. So that's our practice, right? As Saraswati says, can you reach for that highest consciousness of what you are and then hang on to it so that you weave it back into your life, every breath, every step, every thought, and when you do that, then the world looks like a different place, right? You look like a different being. You don't assume that the limitations that uh, you've been living with your entire existence are ones that have to be that way forever. It allows you to become more. And then that cutting free means that we don't then generate more of that demonic energy and start the whole cycle over again where then we need Dorga, right? So Saraswati, can you remember that you are a soul and that not only are you a soul, but that all beings around you are part of that same soul. With the eyes closed for a moment, find yourself in your comfortable seat. Comfortable seat, I always say, is not just physically you sitting in a way that is comfortable. But can you find the seat in yourself where you are settled? Is it possible for you to be in your own body, in your own mind, and whatever aches and pains and weirdness that is there, that you are settled? That's what it means to be at peace. You're not trying to run from any of it. You bring your awareness to the space between your eyebrows. As you're breathing, as you inhale, imagine from that space, just this experience of everything expanding all around you. So your entire breath, you can visualize it as expanding outward in all directions from that space of the third eye. And then as you exhale, it just gently comes back to that center point right between the eyebrows. 
and inhale it again, expand it in all directions. Just keep feeling that sensation of how wide can my breath go? How big, how long can I follow it? And then exhale, you bring it back to the center. Just keep breathing that really, really wide experience through your mind because your mind, as much as you might feel that it is limited, your thinking is limited, your mind is infinite. Right? The field of your mind is infinite. And it is not, the beginning and end of it is not the thoughts that are running through. Why do we practice meditation? To become aware of that. And if your mind can't figure out how to get out of its own limitations, which it can't, we turn to the breath. Instead of Swati is the one they say who rides the breath. The higher consciousness is what rides the breath. Don't get caught up and there's something to do that the breath is supposed to do something. You're just tapping into the reality that there is that infinite space that is already moving through you. It's just to remind your mind that the edges that it believes are the beginning and the end of everything are not the beginning or the end. One more breath, again, expanding from that third eye space. And exhaling, letting it return. If you got yourself a little bit in that pranayam high, wonderful. Let that be the state of your mind as you go through your practice. Don't disturb it. We bring the hands together in front of the heart center, please, palm to palm. We'll open sound of om, deep breath in. Let the eyes float open. Nice, you guys. You can release your hands, please, and go ahead and come forward onto hands and knees. hands and knees. Good. Start to cat cow your spine. So hands underneath the shoulders, knees underneath the hips. And as you're inhaling and exhaling, keep that experience of, again, trying to let your awareness go beyond the physical, right? Letting your awareness go beyond the edges of what feels like your skin, what feels like the range of motion that you have. Good. Sometimes, or it used to be a cue that was given, is that if you imagine that the line of energy that your spine is doing or that any of your limbs are doing in a pose, you imagine that it goes on forever, right? So as you're breathing here, you're inhaling, you're imagining that that tail and the sternum are actually rising up and that are eternally, right? They're going on forever. That doesn't stop where you uh, no longer feel physical sensation. And then the exhale, same thing. You're getting as round into your back body as you can, but you imagine that that effort is going on forever. Good. The idea of that, again, is to get your awareness to get a little bit broader than where you typically say, ah, that's enough sensation. I don't need to feel anything more than that. And it's also because it's going to change the way you physically move. If you're assuming that that line of energy of the motion is going longer than your physical self, is your energy will go longer than your physical self, right? You'll actually find more range of motion. Good, you guys. Come back to a neutral spine, please. And then tuck your toes, lift your hips, come into downward facing dog. Nice, you guys. And then pedal your feet just a little bit, alternating bending one knee and the other. Got it. Saraswati, I have to say, is one of my favorite variations of the goddess. She is the reminder that there is nothing in this world that can stop you. It's only you. 
that stops yourself. You say, well, that sounds a lot like Dorna, right? Because she's the one that destroys things. Saraswati is the one that says no, because it's your mind that traps you. And if you know how to free yourself from your mind, then there's nothing in this world that can stop you. Come back to stillness, heels reaching towards the floor. Good, take your right leg up and back behind you, please down dog split. Good, keep your hips nice and high and then bend that knee and pull it in towards your belly. Yep, but don't take the shoulders forward. Just squeeze the knee in, pull your hips up and back. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good. And then extend that leg all the way back and up behind you. Good. Do it one more time. Pull the knee in towards your belly. Pull your hips up and back. Nice. And then extend that leg up and back again. Good. This time, bend the knee. Bring your shoulders forward and bring that knee towards your left elbow. So cross the body. Squeeze. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let it touch the elbow. Go. That's it. And then take it all the way up and back. Down dog split. Really nice. And then step that right foot forward between the hands. Lunge. Good. Walk both hands inside the front foot, please. Walk to your left until you come to the center of your mat. Turn your toes. Prasarita Padottanasana. Good. Lift and spread the toes so that you feel the wideness of your feet. Nice, you guys. And then squeeze your legs towards each other. Pull your hips up just a little higher. Drop your head and your shoulders. Hold opposite elbows for a moment. Let yourself sway from side to side. Good. And if that's just a little tiny motion of your arms that's happening, let your swing come from your waist. <laughs> there you go. Nice, Allison. You got it. Right, the Allison I can see. Obviously, Allison online, your camera's off. I can't see it. But I'm sure you're doing great. Come back to center, please. Release the hands down to the floor. Walk your hands straight forward in front of you so you're in a wide-legged downward facing dog. Nice. Again, hips drawing up and back, but then pressing into your hands, don't forget. Excellent, you guys. Walk your hands all the way back in, please. Take your hands to your hips, come all the way up to stand. Good, turn your right toes forward towards the top of your mat, bend the knee, come into warrior two. Good, turn your palms to face up towards the ceiling. Good, and then squeeze the shoulder blades behind the heart. So get really uh, over-exaggerated in that squeezing. Squeeze, 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 squeeze. So you're gonna feel like your wrists are actually coming back behind that level with your armpits. So now keep that squeeze, but bring your uh, hands slightly forward so that your arms are right in line with your armpits. Good, and now turn your palms to face down and extend out through your fingers. So you're taking the tops of your shoulders wide, but you're still squeezing the shoulder blades in. And then imagine that that line of energy through your fingertips goes into infinity in front of you and into infinity behind you. Good. Now drop that left hand down the back thigh, take the right arm up and back, reverse warrior. Draw that armpit down towards your hip. Good, but then lift the top of your uh, hip bone up off of your thigh. Good. Nice, you guys. Come all the way back up to center, please. Cartwheel the hands down to the floor, spin your back heel up. Good, take that right leg up and back behind you, down dog split. Good, bend the knee, kick your heel in towards your butt, stack the right hip on top of the left. You got it. Don't let that left hip fall in completely. So keep your left low belly lifted and wide, left armpit lifted and wide. Good. And then point that knee down to the floor, please, and step the right foot back between the hands. Left. Good. Drop the left knee, use a blanket underneath that knee if you'd like. Anjaneyasana, inhale both arms up to the sky. You got it, take your hands back behind your head, elbows wide, and then hug your elbows in towards each other. So as you squeeze the elbows in, yeah, you get a little wider in your back, and then draw those elbow tips down. That's it, so they squeeze in and then draw down. Beautiful, now draw your low rib cage in, get taller through your sternum, lift up, let your head fall back but keep that cradling of the back of your heart with your shoulder blades. Nice, and now stretch the arms up towards the sky, come all the way back up, pulling up through your low belly. Nice, and then release the hands down to the floor. Beautiful, left hand plants right arm to the sky, spinal twist. Back knee is still on the floor. You got it. Draw that right hip crease back, left hip pushes wide. Nice. And then tuck the back toes, please, still in the twist. Lift your back knee up off the floor. Good. And then kick that back thigh higher because when we lift up from the floor, we tend not to actually get that hip out of that hyperextension. So pull up through your low belly. 
Nice. Now take your right arm over your ear towards the upper left hand corner of your mat. Squeeze that right hip in. Push your left hip wide. Uh -huh. And then release your hands down to the floor. Excellent. Step back down or face your dog. I, I will talk to all of your houses. <laughs> I'm going to learn the Krishna thing. Come forward to plank pose. Lower all the way down to your belly. Good. Rise up cobra. You're like, what Krishna thing? Come back to downward facing dog. Sorry, I didn't say cobra. Most of you did it. You didn't do cobra. Do cobra. And then come back to downward facing dog. I just assumed you were going to go with it. Take your left leg up and back behind you. Down dog split. Good. Bend the knee, pull that knee forward towards your belly. Keep your hips lifted. So this is just a really stretch into the hip flexors, right? So squeeze in, but pull your hips back. Good. And then extend that leg back and up behind you. Same thing again. Pull the knee in towards your belly, but pull your hips up and back. Yeah. And then extend that leg back up to down dog split. And then bend the knee again. This time as it comes forward, take your shoulders forward and take that knee towards your right elbow. So squeeze it in. Good. Keep your ribs up. And then extend that leg all the way up and back. Down dog split. You got it. And then left foot steps forward between the hands. Nice. Both hands inside the front foot. Walk to your right. Cross the reach of Padokanasana. Good. Lift and spread the toes. Nice. Good, you guys. And then again, as you exhale here, maybe let your head drop, let your shoulders drop, hold opposite elbows, let yourself sway, but from the waist, right? So let yourself move from your waistline. Nice. So the Krishna thing is they say that Krishna had this ability that he would just multiply himself. So when he's dancing with the, uh, uh, the milkmaids, is there would be an individual Krishna for each one of them. And that Krishna was, of course, the perfect Krishna for each one of them. So I'm trying to master that skill where I can just <laughs> multiply myself. I can be at all of your houses all the time. But that's not for me. <laughs> just during class, just during class, just during. Good, come back to stillness, please release the hands down to the floor. This time, walk your hands back behind your heels. Good, so it's like you're walking underneath. So keep walking your hands back. You can turn your fingers if you'd like but you're reaching underneath you. So you keep squeezing the legs, pull your hips up towards the sky, then walk your hands back. So you're getting deep into that sensation of forward folding, not being just how far you can reach with your arms, but how far can you reach with your spine? Good. And then walk your hands back out in front of you. Good. Take your hands to your hips, come all the way up to the stand. You got it. Left toes turn forward towards the top of your mat. Bend the knee, come into warrior two arms wide. And again, turn your palms up towards the ceiling. And as your palms turn up, you get a little lift from the underside of your armpits and then squeeze behind the heart. So that over-exaggeration is going to pull your wrist back, right? That's the too much energy. So as you're squeezing there, now move your hands forward again. So you take that feeling of being too, uh, too far in your armpits out, and then turn your palms to face down and reach out through your fingertips, extend, but keep that squeeze behind the heart. Good, so the shoulders drop, but that upper back stays really engaged. Nice, right hand drops down the back thigh, left palm spins up and back. Nice, you guys. Now imagine again, the energy through those fingertips is extending into infinity. So that arm that's lifted, don't let it get floppy at the wrist, right? Reach, that's it, nice. Good. Excellent, you guys. Come all the way back up, please. And then cartwheel the hands down to the floor. Spin your back heel up. Good. And then take that left leg up and back behind you, down dog split. Good. Bend the knee, kick your heel in towards your butt. Stack the left hip on top of the right. Good. Watch it as that right heel squeezes in towards the midline. So you're not dropping your right hip or collapsing your right hip. You're pulling up, widening. Good. Point that left knee down towards the floor. Step the left foot between the hands. Lunge. And then drop the right knee down to the floor. Use a blanket if you'd like. Anjaneyasana. Inhale, both arms up to the sky. Good. Interlace your fingers. Press the heels of your hands up towards the sky. Pull up through your ribs. So get out of that habit of pushing your ribs forward, pushing your pelvis forward here. Get as tall as you can. Pull up. Front of that right thigh is going to get softer. 
And then with that softness, you can bring your pelvis forward again. Yeah, now it's really in your hip and not in you just pushing your groins. Excellent. And now keep that sensation, reach your heart up a little higher, let your arms fall back, let your head fall back. You can release the grip of the hands, but take that back bend and in your mouth. And continue to feel yourself pulling up from your waistline. Nice. And then all the way back up to center. Really good. Release the hands down to the floor. Nice job. Right hand plants, left arm comes to the sky, spinal twist with that back knee still on the floor. Because I want you to notice how much when you went into that twist, your right hip spun forward, you pushed your left hip out to the side, and now you're completely collapsed in the front of your right thigh. Don't pretend you aren't, I'm watching you. <laughs> so pull your left hip in, push your right hip wide. It's going to feel very dissatisfying. <laughs> Good. Nice, you guys. Root into the big toe mound of your front foot. Don't let your knee fall open. Good. Now lift your back knee into that higher prayer, not prayer twisting, higher twisting, lunge, and pull that right thigh higher. Huh. Good, you guys. Left arm comes over the ear, reaching as long as you can. Keep pushing your right hip higher and wider, and then scooping your low belly to drop that left hip. Yes. And then release that hand down to the floor. Step yourself back down, facing up. I know lunges are hard. <laughs> To really do them correctly and get all of that outer hip and thigh energy really working, it's really difficult. Good. Slide forward to plank pose, upward push up. Lower down, slow to your belly. Good. Rise up, cobra. Don't forget this time. Reminding myself. And then exhale, release, please. Press up the hands and knees and come back to child's pose. <sighs> It is a little bit, right? We do so much in our lives with very little awareness. We do it to the degree that we're comfortable with, or we do it to the degree, to the degree of, well, this is how much effort I feel like putting into it. Right? This is how I was taught to do this, and therefore that's how I have to do it forever. This is the first way that I ever felt in a lunge, so I'm going to lunge that way for eternity. Saraswati is some of that get out of that habit that of thinking that your body and your mind isn't changing every second. Right? She's the energy that flows, the energy that is constantly changing, that is constantly bringing things to their fruition, their fullness. You say, well, that sounds like Lakshmi. Well, with the same energy, slightly different perspective. Walk your torso to the right, please, over your right thigh. She is the energy that flows. So anything that is in motion, that's what she's about. Your mind is in motion. The prana is in motion even when you're sitting still. Come back to center, walk your hands to the left. Saraswati's story is one of my favorites because she is one of the few goddesses who does not have a consort, she does not have a husband. Even though she's often described as being paired with Brahma in the stories, they're actually divorced because she was not the person Brahma wanted her to be. And she refused to conform, right? She refused to give up on who she is. And so they got divorced. She's happier for it. Come back to center. Come back up onto hands and knees, please. Good. Take your right leg up and back behind you in line with your hip. Walk the left arm forward, take a balance. Good, press down through your left shin, right? So you wanna be distributing your weight, not just into the tip of that knee, but down towards the shin, the ankle, the foot. Good, and then imagine here again that you're pushing your left hip wide into something. You're pushing your right hip wide into something over there. Nice, now bend that right knee, keep your heel in towards your butt, reach up and back, find the foot or the ankle if you'd like, or hand comes behind your head if you're not reaching for your foot. Now, as soon as you reach for your foot, you probably give weird things to your hips. So push your left hip wide again, and then push your right hip wide. Oh, yeah. Kick your thigh a little higher. That's it. Excellent, you guys. And now re release, extend all the way back to the straight leg and the straight arm. 
You got it. And then release that left hand down to the floor, please. Take the right knee down to the floor, so it's bent. And then just lift that knee out and wide to the side into a fire hydrant. So your right knee is lifting wide in line with your hip or as close to it as you can get. Yeah. And then push your left hip wider. Yeah, your supporting hip has to go wider. Good, lift your left low belly. Take more weight into your right hand. Uh-huh, I know. If you can, extend that right leg all the way out to straight. And if the answer is no, I can't, keep the knee bent. Good, you got it. And then bend the knee again, please. Release that knee down to the floor. Do some hip circling. Fire hydrants are hard. If you've ever done a fitness class and you just do like 50 of them without thinking, you're like, oh, that's not so bad. It burns, but it's not so bad. You do one really paying attention. You're like, oh my God, <laughs> can't handle it. Good, come back to stillness, please. Hands and knees. Take your left leg back and up behind you. Good, walk the right arm forward towards straight. Again, paying attention to how you are distributing your weight. Good. So if all of your energy is falling forward here or falling back, that's not going to work, right? So you have to have the hips drawing back with the armpits drawing forward. Push your hips wide. Good. And I know I'm already making you hold here. You're like, well, this is why it's hard because it's fatiguing. I'm aware. <laughs> Bend your left knee, kick your heel and reach up and back to the foot or the ankle. But it's also how you get to actually experience the pose that you're in. So it's not to make you tired, it's to make you aware that muscular energy has to be sustained. And that it's tiring because we don't do that habitually. Push your hips wide, right hip wide, left hip wide, kick your thigh higher, lift your chest higher. Feel as though you are trying to levitate in this pose. Good. And then go ahead and release, extend the leg, extend the arm. You got it. Good, and then right hand comes back down to the floor, bend the left knee, so bring it back alongside the right just to reset. And then lift that left knee up and wide into that fire hydrant position. So the knee goes out towards the hip. Good, both hands on the floor, Meredith, you're just lifting the leg. You got it, out to the side. Nice, good, you guys. Good, good, good. And then see if you can extend that leg all the way to straight out in line with your hip. Nice, Harry. You got it. So take it wide again, Elisa, towards the uh, parallel to the floor. You got it, Emily, nice, nice season. And then pull that knee back in, please. Good, release that knee down to the floor, circle your hips the other direction. <laughs> Wonder what sort of weird plan does she have today? Plan to destroy your idea of who you think you are. <laughs> That's my plan. It's Gorga's plan. Lakshmi's plan. Saraswati's plan. Right? They say that energy that is infinite and what we call divine is always calling us. Come back to center, please. Drop your hips back to your heels, child's pose. I always find that comforting, right? That no matter how far you try to run away from it, no matter how deeply you try and bury yourself in your habits and in your distractions, is that that energy is always calling us. And so when we drop into something like the breath, is that gravity, we're no longer resisting it by paying attention to or focusing on the limitations of our mind, the thoughts themselves, then the gravity of that pull, we start to feel it. So it's like every breath is drawing us back to that and the mind starts to freak out at some point. It says, whoa, 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 what are you doing to me? All we're doing is giving it the opportunity to step out of that very small space that it has learned to live in, has learned to find itself as. I was asking the question yesterday is where were you before you were born? Not your body, not where was that? Where was your consciousness before you were born, before this body was born? Because biologically we know, you know, we can clarify where physical bodies come from, how they form. I don't think anyone has given us a clear idea yet of where consciousness comes from. Where were you before you were born? Before you had your first thought, before there was a you that identified with this body and this mind, where were you? 
It's the only question yogis really care about. Ancient yogis, anyway. You're yogis too, so whatever you care about, that's what yogis care about. Walk yourself back up onto hands and knees. Downward facing dog. Go ahead. Take your right leg up and back behind you. Down dog split. Good. Bring that knee up, knee forward. Sorry, foot forward between the hands. Lunge. Drop the back heel. Baby toe parallels back of your mat. Take the arms up to warrior two. Nice, Marlene. And awesome, you guys. Again, feel that squeeze behind the shoulders. Good. And then stretch out through your fingers. So you have that feeling of trying to really widen that armpit space. Really good. And then take the right forearm onto the front thigh. Take the left arm over the ear. Side angle. But watch that your front knee doesn't start to roll in as you do that. Press it wide. Nice melody. Good. And then keep that left arm extended over the ear. Take your right forearm up off of your thigh and reach it parallel to the floor out from your chest. So do the crisscross arm. Good. Nice. So right arm straight out from the chest, Melissa. Yep, you got it, Marlene. That's it. Beautiful. And nice on you. Good, you guys. Uncurl yourself back to warrior two, arms wide. And then straighten the front leg for trikonasana. Reach out through that right rib cage. Extend as far as you can. Let the right hand touch down to the front leg floor block. No weight. Left arm to the sky. No weight there. Good. And then bring your arms all the way back up to where you started. You got to use those sideways muscles. Good. You're going to do it again. Extend out. Let that hand touch down. Barely. No weight. Left arm up. I know. And then pull yourself all the way back up. Yeah. And then one more time, extend all the way out. Let that hand touch down, left arm to the sky. Pause for a moment with no weight. And then you can let that right hand settle maybe a little bit more, but I don't want you to lose the awareness of what it's like to hold yourself through your trunk. Good. Excellent, you guys. Softening the ribs in, extend out through the crown of your head. Again, as though that energy goes on forever because it does. Beautiful. Nice, you guys. Bend the right knee, please. Release both hands down to the floor inside the front foot. Spin your back heel up, then walk the hands forward, step up into standing split. So left side comes parallel to the floor. But bend your standing knee, please. If you bend your standing knee, you can realize how much you are cockeyed for your pelvis. So your left hip is too high, I guarantee it. So scoop into that low belly, pull your right hip bone up off of your thigh and send that left hip wider. Your leg's gonna drop a little bit. And again, very dissatisfying, but that's okay. Good, now scooping into your belly, press your hips up towards the, cup, the sky to start to straighten that standing leg. And then any amount you can, start to walk your hands back towards your standing foot. Nice, keep your chest slightly lifted. Yeah, just for balance. Beautiful, but walking the hands backwards. Nice thing. Beautiful, you guys. Then walk the hands forward again so that you are steady. And then go ahead and bend that right knee, step all the way back, nice long lunge. Take both arms to the sky, high lunge. You got it. And then hands to the heart center, please. Come into prayer twist, left elbow to the outside of the right knee. Push your left hip wide. Yeah, that's your back hip, push it wide and kick it higher. That's it. Nice, you guys. Scoop into your low belly, your middle rib, so that you can send that left rib cage under. Take your right arm straight up to the sky. So the left elbow is still hooked. Right arm lifts up. Beautiful. Nice, you guys. And then release that hand down to the floor, please. Unwind. Set back to downward facing dog. Good. Come forward to plank pose. And this is what I gave the option yesterday. You can either continue the vinyasa or you can hold plank. So from here, you can stay or you can lower down to your belly, rise up into cobra, and come back to downward facing dog. If you're holding plank, hold it with a relaxed jaw. <laughs> Good. And then if you're still in plank, lift your hips up, come back to downward facing dog. Really nice, you guys. Beautiful. Left leg up and back behind you, down dog split. Step that foot forward between the hands, lunge. 
Drop the back heel, baby toe parallel to the back of your mat. Come into warrior two. Shoulders over the hips. I know a lot of standing faces. Just wondering why. Left forearm comes onto the front side. Get your right arm over the ear. Good. Here we always say, or again, the cue used to be all the time, is that there's a line of energy from your back heel that goes all the way up through those extended fingertips. So don't get wiggly with your wrist, right? Because that's the line of prana. So you want there to be this awareness that your shoulder is connected to your hip and that you're trying to extend through both. Keep the right arm where it is, squeeze the feet. Left forearm comes off of the thigh, extend that arm straight out from your chest. You've got those crisscrossed arms. Widen your left inner knee, pull your butt cheek in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lean further. If you're not already parallel to the floor, get there. Nice. Good. Really good, Meredith. You got it. And then unwind back to warrior two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your side waist will feel it tomorrow. <laughs> Straighten your front thigh. Good. Trikonasana. Extend out through that left rib cage. Let that left hand touch down. No weight. That's it. And then pull yourself all the way back up. Awesome. And then extend out again. Reach. Let that hand touch down. Pull your ribs in as you're reaching in both directions into infinity. And then pull yourself all the way back up. That's it. Last time, extend all the way out. Let that left hand touch down, right arm to the sky. Again, remember, and here you can drop a little more weight into that hand. But remember what it's like to feel yourself holding from your trunk. Yeah. And to continue to extend that even when you are, quote unquote, resting in the pose, right? I'm no longer giving you specific cues that you are looking for. How long can I get from my hips to my armpit? That's the thing, right? If I'm not here telling you, do this in the pose, do that in the pose, you just stop trying to find more space. Don't survive your poses, live your poses. Draw your throat back. That's it. Bend that left knee, release both hands down to the floor inside the front foot, spin your back heel up. Walk your hands forward, step up to standing split. All right. And then bend your standing knee. So by bending the standing knee, you can start to rotate the hips. You can get into that very sticky place that is your outer hip and butt and thigh of that standing leg. Good. Once you've done that, widen that inner knee. Good. Scoop your belly. Push your hips back up towards the sky to straighten that standing leg any amount. It might stay a little bit bent. And then walk your hands backwards towards your foot any amount. Good. Saying that a lot. Any amount. Any amount. <laughs> And that's to remind you is that the goal is not to reach your foot. The goal is to say, I don't have to have my hands in the same place and I can still hold the pose. And I understand how to hold my center. And the pose wraps itself around. It expands from that point. Good. Walk your hands back forward, please. Bend the standing knee. Step back to a nice long lunge. Inhale, hold arms to the sky high lunge. Right? A lot of things about standing poses, they become easier when we start to pay attention to our center of gravity. And we make sure our center of gravity is distributed between the limbs, not forcing itself into one or the other. Hands at heart center, please prayer twist. Left elbow, sorry, right elbow to the outside of the left knee. Keep your back thigh higher. Good. Press that knee wide into your elbow and then press your right hip wide to the right. Beautiful. Curl into your middle ribs. And then stack that left shoulder even wider or higher. Reach the left arm straight up towards the sky. Right elbow is still hooked. Feel as though that hand is pulling you up to the sky. You're getting lighter. Levitating. And then release that hand. Unwind your twist. Both hands down to the floor. Step back down. Dog. I don't like. Come forward. Plank pose up for a push up. And again, you can either hold plank or move through the vinyasa. Lowering down to your belly. Or through chaturanga. If that's what you need today. Rising up into cobra or upward facing dog. If you're holding plank, you're doing it with a relaxed jaw, pressing back through your heels and pulling your sternum forward. Beautiful. And if you're in plank, lift your hips up and back, down dog. Awesome. Drop the knees down to the floor, please. Child's pose. Maybe letting the elbows bend and be a little pillow with your hands to rest your forehead. Give the shoulders some relief. center of gravity. 
talk about the center and go a lot, and then we have no, most of us, no clear concept of what that means. Physically, right, your center of gravity, learning to use the body well in a mechanical way means that everything becomes less effort. Again, it's in our mind that we decide that something is too hard for us. In our mind, if we decide that it's too hard, is we often stop looking for ways to do it. So yeah, something might be physically out of your capability for your body to do in the usual way, the normal way, the way that it's being described. But if you want to experience something, truly want to, you will find 18,000 other ways to approach it. Your mind says, oh, it's too hard. Stop looking. That's what we mean is that the mind is what traps you, not the limitations of your body, not the limitations of the world. Those things determine in what ways your experiences occur and how you find them. The mind is what traps you. Saraswati is that energy that says, learn about your higher consciousness, educate yourself about your own mind. That it works for you. So that it is a constant connection to that infinite source. If you know yourself to be that, then there's no such thing as this life is too hard for me. This is too big for me. I can't handle this. Can't handle what your infinite existence. Walk yourself back up. Right. Come and sit on your butt, set your legs straight up. Right. 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 The truth is, our mind cannot handle our infinite existence. Don't worry. <laughs> it really can. <laughs> Use a blanket underneath your seat if you'd like, set your legs straight up. <laughs> Bend the right knee if your uh, knee in towards your chest. Let the foot come to the inside of the right thigh. Let the knee go wide. Round your chest. In. Inhale the arms up to the sky. Take a little twist to your left, pressing down through that left heel. Bow forward over the left leg. Probably when I say things like, oh, there's no such thing as this is too hard for me, you're like, no, no, no. <laughs> My mind needs that. Thank you. It's possible that my mind would think that. I'm not saying your mind won't think it. What we're saying is that your mind might think it, and then your awareness says, I know you're scared, and let's move forward anyway. That's Florida. I know you don't know exactly what step to take, but there's a way forward. That's Florida. That simply by taking a step forward, you remain open for opportunities to come to you, like watch you. The thing that you didn't think could possibly happen happens, that's watch you. And even if that doesn't work, when you're taking a shower one day, your mind suddenly says, oh, I just need to do this. Instead of swat me. Your mind is open for energy to move. The world continues to renew itself over and over and over again through your mind. Start to walk your hands, your right hand, especially towards that baby toe edge of your extended legs. So you're coming into a little bit more of a twist. And then left hand can come to your hip. Yep, start to turn your ribs a little bit more to the left. So you're still in that forward fold, but now you're beginning to twist. Lift your chest just a little bit higher so that you can really get that extension from your hip all the way to that right armpit, draw your throat back. If your shoulders are hunched or you're doing crazy things, adjust, come higher so that your spine gets longer. Good. And then maybe you stretch your left arm up to the sky if you feel pretty comfortable here. If you don't keep your hand at your hip. And then if you're really low here, maybe you take the arm over your ear and reach your left hand for the big toe mound of your foot. So your arms are crisscrossed, but you're still twisting. Keep twisting along. Got it. And then you can probably reach your foot. There you go. But nice. Excellent. Nice work. And then slowly unwind yourself, come all the way back up. 
Take both arms up to the sky again, please. Left hand to your right knee, right hand comes back behind you, spinal twist. Good, and as you twist, notice that you just push forward through your left hip and heel. So pull your left hip back. Left, arm, left. left hand to right knee, okay. right hand back behind you. Okay. I got it. Mm. Spinal twist. Push backwards through your left hip. Yep, down to the floor and back. Like you're pulling that heel up into, or thigh bone up into the pelvis. That's it, Ralph. Good. It's called stabilizing your pelvis. Take your right arm up to the sky, so the hand that's behind you, and then lean to the left, please. So you're leaning over that extended leg. Left hand is still on your knee in this twist. Good. Press down through your sit bones. Keep pulling that left thigh up and in. Rotate. Really nice. Good melody. Beautiful, you guys. Come all the way back up, unwind. And then stretch your right leg forward in front of you. Left knee comes in towards your chest. Good, let the foot come to the inside of the right leg, let your knee go wide. You can always use a prop underneath that knee if you need. My suggestion here, right, is, is there's two ways to do Janusha Shasana, right? One of them is where we actually open the pelvis more. First variation, though, typically is we say to keep your hips level with each other, right? So that's the suggestion, is to try and keep your hips level with each other as much as you can for this variation. And then inhale the arms up to the sky, take a little twist to your right. Bow over that right leg. I joke that Saraswati is one of my favorites because of her story, and it's not because I think that you know marriage is not a good thing. But being trapped in feeling like your life has been dictated for you in any way, any circumstance, and that you have to meet that expectation for someone to want you like you, for you to want to like yourself. That's how we get trapped in our minds. And that if something does not serve us, that we're not allowed to walk away from it. I like her story because it's the reminder that if you truly know yourself, is that you will walk away from those things. It might be painful. You might have a lot of reasons why you hang out for as long as you do. But it's your mind that traps you. Even your identity, who you believe yourself to be, who you believe you're supposed to be. That's why in meditation they say towards the very end before we really fall into that state of ecstatic absorption, samadhi. The last thing that disappears is the concept of I. The concept of me disappears. And what floods in when there's no more me? Joy. And we can do that even with the concept of me, right? We can allow there to be greater experience of joy flooding us. But we have to let go of our definitions of what is not joy. Start to walk yourself to the right, please. Left hand to the outer edge of that extended leg. Right hand comes to your hip. Good, start to turn your ribs open to the right, still in that forward fold. And again, come as high as you need to to feel like you're really extending from your pelvis. So it doesn't matter how low you stay. What matters is that you get that line from your hip to your armpit to be connected. Don't let your shoulder pull out, draw it in. That's it. And then maybe the right arm comes to the sky. Maybe it stays at the hip. And if your arm feels good up, maybe you take that arm over the ear. Maybe, maybe you don't. And if you can, if you're real low, maybe you can reach for the big toe with that right hand and use that to continue to corkscrew yourself into that twist. You continue to press down into your seat, curl into your ribs and open even more using your hands. Mm. Awesome. Maybe you're just surviving this pose, that's okay. <laughs> And then slowly unwind, come all the way back up. I know, that's a big twist. Good, you guys. Take the arms up alongside your ears. Right hand comes to left knee. Left hand comes back behind you. Different twist. Notice that the tendency is to push forward through that right hip and heel. Pull back instead and drop your weight into that right side. Good. Because if you don't do it here, you have to when you take your hand off the floor, right? So pull it back and in. Get your spine longer. 
And then right hand stays where it is. Take your left arm up alongside your ear. And now lean over that right thigh. So you're reaching. So again, you're in that twist, that corkscrew twist. You gotta use your hand against your knee. You gotta press your seat down into the floor. Nice, nice, Marlene. You got it, Melody. Nice on you. Good, Meredith. Beautiful, Elisa. And then come all the way back up, please. Excellent. And then unwind your legs. Stretch your legs out in front of you. Give them a little shake. Good. And then bend your knees just a bit. So press your heels down, bend your knees, and then walk your hands forward so you can hold your feet or your ankles. So legs still extended a little bit more, Emily, just up on your heels. Yeah, so it's like a lazy Pashimottanasana. I'm not going to say lazy because you're doing this on purpose, but yeah, Pashimottanasana with the knees bent, and then reach forward for the ankles or the feet. That's it. Exactly. Yep. So knees can be inside the arms, and that might be easier. Good. So the idea here is just that you have something to push into. So as you push your feet into your hands, scoop into your belly, press your seat down, round your back. Yeah, it probably feels really good because you've been doing a lot of twisting and probably overdoing it. So press your heels down, hold on, round your back. <laughs> That's it. Nice, you guys. And now remember this feeling of drawing your ribs and your belly back to support your spine. Start to wiggle your heels forward till your legs come more towards straight. You can move your hands wherever they need to go, but stay a little bit rounded in your belly and then fold forward again. Let yourself drop deeper in. And if it feels good to just keep your hands at your feet with your knees bent and push, do that. Good. Nice, you guys. Then slowly walk yourself all the way back up. <laughs> really nice. So I'm going to give you an opportunity to go upside down if you would like to go upside down. If upside down today means legs up the wall or it means laying on your back with your uh, sacrum on a block, you can totally do that. But opportunity to go upside down if you would like to. I know, I'm just measuring like how many legs up the wall are happening. Nice, Kristen. Uh, it's Saraswati because she is described as the energy that flows through the mind that comes from the cosmic space, the etheric space through the mind. Practices for Saraswati mostly involve things around the third eye, around the crown. Versions are great for that. Nice, you guys. It is always a yogi joke that inversions calm the mind. For people who are learning inversions, they're like, no, they don't. Make me crazy. But the upside down experience for the body calms the nervous system. The amount of focus required to do an inversion brings your mind into close to what we call dharana. One point of focus calms the mind. If you think to yourself, there's no way, there's nothing that I can do to calm this crazy mind of mine, that's your mind saying, don't try to stop me from being crazy. There's a million ways to calm your mind. Discovering the ways in which your mind will calm, that's up to you. If we don't give in to that fundamental belief that our mind rules everything that we do, everything that we can be, then we start to live a little different. Guys, stay with it. Another 30 seconds or so. Mm -hmm. If you already feel like you're complete with your upside down, of course, come down and rest. Child's pose, Virasana. And then shoulder stand, rest and constructive rest, or fish. 
fishes in the resting pose. Nice. And as you feel complete, go ahead and find your way out of your inversion. Again, giving yourself a moment in your child's pose or your asana or resting on your back. And once you found yourself, moment of rest, <laughs> found yourself, <laughs> bring yourself to lay on your back if you're not there already. If you're in the room with me, bring your head towards the center of the room. If you're at home, put your head where you want it to be. Good. And then grab your block, bend your knees, lift your hips, place the block underneath your sacrum. Sorry, because it's what you were just doing with your inversion. Then before you get too comfortable, lock underneath your sacrum, lift your feet up off the floor so your knees are 90 degrees parallel to the floor, shins parallel to the floor. But so again, your block was super, super high, and you're like, oh, this is not safe. Change your block. Mm -hmm. Good. The shin's parallel to the floor. Keep your left knee where it is. Take your right toes, dip them down towards the floor. So the knee stays bent. You're just taking them down and forward, like you're going to place that foot down for bridge. And then you're going to pick it back up. And then take your left toes down and pick it back up. Good. So this is low belly work, right toes down. Take it back up, keep your sacrum on that block, left toes down, take it back up. So it's working low belly, it's working hip flexors, keep alternating. But make sure you're doing one and then the other. Don't do that sort of one is moving and the other is moving at the same time. Stay stable. All right. Notice where your legs get fatigued doing this if they do get fatigued. Nice. Good, guys. Do one more each side, whatever pace you're at, so you're moving very fast. <laughs> <laughs> and then come back up, shins parallel to the floor. Good. And stretch your legs straight to the sky just for a breath. Extend up through the underside of the heels, the ankles. Keeping your sacrum on the block. Set your arms like you would for bridge, so robot arms. And then press down, your sacrum is still on that block. Find a little arch in your lower spine and then push down through the upper arms. Lift your chest as though you were coming into bridge or fish. So find that feeling of drawing wide through the tops of your shoulders, feeling your chest lift. Legs straight up, extend. A little arch in your lower back, so your sacrum stays really rooted to the block. And then draw your ribs in. Yes. Good. And then go ahead and bend the knees, plant the feet. Let the arms relax and rest for a moment. Yes, I can even make supporting bridge. <laughs> That's a lot of work. I was laughing. One of these days, I will teach my Thursday class on legs off the wall. <laughs> Can't wait. <laughs> Actually, if you think about it, it's a very challenging pose to prepare for. We usually don't prepare for it, right? We use it as sanctuary. <laughs> to really prepare for it would be difficult. And suddenly you're like, I'm not coming to that class. <laughs> but the reward is legs up the wall, right? I just give it no direction. Where does it go? Who are you when the world isn't demanding that you do this or do that? It's very interesting looking at the habits, the ingrown habits, and wondering where they came from. Mm -hmm. 
laugh a lot at how difficult it is for me to throw things away, even when I don't want them. Throw out a lot of expired food the other day, and it actually hurt me to do it. <laughs> like, well, you're not going to eat it. It's not good to eat. I'm still sad because it was food that didn't get used. Our habits, right? What will I not let go of? Stay stagnant in my life. Takes up space. Where is the insistence that that's the person that I have to be? I also tend to wait to the last minute to do things, even though I have plenty of time to do it beforehand. I have to file my taxes an entire week early. It's unheard of. <laughs> I had to fight myself a little bit on it, being like, well, maybe you'll do them and then you'll just file them on the deadline. Why? <laughs> Because we're someone that does things at the last minute. Wrong. It's a habit. These are just silly things from my life, but it happens to all of us. We have our things that we're sure I have to do it this way because this is how I do it. Usually, no. One more breath where you are. Then lift your hips up off the block, place the block to the side, slowly come on down. Now pause for a moment with just your hips resting on the floor. Don't give in to that urge to immediately pull your knees into your chest. Do a little rocking on your pelvis, so just pelvic tilts, trying to find a little bit of space. And let the pelvis come to steadiness. Draw the right knee in towards your chest. Keep the left foot where it is. Yeah, notice that it immediately started to fall out to the side when you pulled your right knee in. So keep your left knee in line with your hip. And then hold behind your right thigh. Extend that heel up towards the sky. Hamstring stretch. Good. Send your tailbone down towards the floor. So it's almost like you're trying to find that little arch to your lower back again. And then soften your ribs. You got it. Keep the left knee bent. It's a little easier for the pelvis. Beautiful. And then bend that right knee again. Place the ankle on top of your left knee. Lift your left shin parallel to the floor. Reach through to hold. Joke and say it's a game of hide and seek that we play the individual soul with that God essence or the mind with that God essence, a game of hide and seek, but it's never God hiding from us. It's us hiding from that divinity, us hiding from wholeness. I have to do things at the last minute. I have to do the crazy things that I've absorbed from my experiences. I have to be that crazy even though I've had 12. Unwind, please. Placing the left foot down to the floor. Place the right foot down to the floor. Keep the right knee bent. Hug your left knee in towards your chest. Good, don't let the right knee fall open. Hold behind the left thigh. Extend the heel up towards the sky. Pressing the thigh into the hands. Again, find where your tailbone is rooting down. So it's gonna feel like that little arch of the spine. Good. And then bend the left knee, place the ankle over the right thigh. Lift your right shin parallel to the floor. Again, you can reach through to hold or let the legs hold themselves. I know I said, try not to just survive your poses, but really live them. The same way where you feel sensation in your body right now, instead of judging it and trying to run away from it. Can you interpret that sensation of staying with your body's discomfort as love? But staying with this body is love. Right? That love is not the absence of discomfort, but that love, real deeply held love 
embraces all experience. Because that's the essence, right? The eternal essence is that all experience is embraced. It's only when we get stuck in one piece of it that we lose that experience of joy. Your mind is what traps you. Start to work with your mind. Unwind your legs, please. Hug both knees in towards your chest. Scoot your hips over to the left, please. Drop your knees to the right, spinal twist. And bring the knees back up towards the center. Scoot your hips over to the right. Drop your knees to the left. Bring yourself back to center, squeeze the knees in, bring your forehead up to meet your knees, so hug as curled into yourself as you can. And then as you release, extend the legs out in front of you, arms alongside you, find your Shavasana.
gently. Allow the breath to get deeper. Body begin to stretch, move in whatever way is serving well. And as you're ready, draw your knees in towards your chest. Roll to your right side. Take a moment before you begin to push the floor away. Come back to an upright seated position. Bringing your hands in front of the heart center, either palm to palm or the lotus mudra. So taking the thumb and pinkies and heels of the hands together, separating the middle three fingers. And that rests the heart if you'd like. At the end of the celebration of Navaratri, there is that 10th day that says that you get to come home. And the coming home is not a physical, I come back to where I started or I come back to where I belong. It's coming back into this body and this mind. But knowing it on a level that maybe you didn't before. And maybe you were confused or there were things you didn't understand or you were trapped in those thoughts, those ideas, those energies that were so present, so big, your mind couldn't get itself out from underneath it. So we practice and we practice and we practice thinking that we're going to get somewhere. And then the realization hits us that we are already exactly where we intend to be, where we intend to go. It's becoming settled right here. That is the celebration. It's the learning to create peace in this body, this mind, this life, to take that consciousness that is beyond all limitation and weave it into this world that has definition, that has form. But to know that the form doesn't take away the power or the potential of that eternalness. You are not who your mind thinks you have to be. You're more. And if you know yourself as that eternal energy of the soul, then you can do anything in this world. Anything. It's only your mind that traps you. So the celebration is that there are no more demons when we know our mind because we stop inviting them in. We stop creating them. So you are Durga, you are Lakshmi, you are Saraswati, you are every version of the goddess that can be. Let your mind know yourself as that. And if the first step is just to remember, I am not these thoughts. I don't have to be the person that I was yesterday. That's liberation. Either hold the hands here or bring the palms together. Sound of Om, deep breath in. Oh. Oh. Palms together, sliding the thumbs up to the space between the eyebrows. Namaste. 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 Thank you guys so, so much. Have a beautiful rest of your day, beautiful rest of your week. Meditation at 11 if you'd like to stay or come back. Uh, Angela's Tapping Circle is today at 2. So if you're still interested in that, I think you can sign up last minute because she is still holding it. Um, so check that out if you'd like. And then check out the website for other stuff coming up. Cheryl and Eileen have a retreat in May. Um, La, 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 la. I don't know what else I'm supposed to tell you. Stuff I'm sure. Look it up. <laughs> Bye.